So the very first set of videos we will be covering are just going to be very general mammalian characteristics. So the first thing that I'll go over will be the major organs and some important comparisons. So in front of me I have a variety of plastic brain models. The main components of the brain that we will be focusing on comparing in all of the models is the cerebrum as well as the cerebellum. So just as a quick refresher, the cerebrum is the portion of the brain responsible for the initiation of movement, temperature, touch, vision, hearing, judgment and reasoning, problem solving, etc., etc. And one of the major functions of the cerebellum is to coordinate the timing and force of different muscle groups to produce fluid limb or body movements. So the very first brain model that we have here is our trout brain. And you have um, all of these diagrams in the specimen list as well, if you want a closer look at those. So um, this is our trout brain, and in the trout brain, we notice that the cerebrum, which is in yellow, and the cerebellum, which is in pink, are relatively small. However, the optic lobes, so these blue parts, or the blue part, um, is really enlarged. From this, we can kind of assume that vision is really important to a fish, which is why a very large proportion of their brain is allotted to this function. So moving on, we have our uh, frog brain. So the frog brain has a very small cerebellum, which is in pink again. So this part right under here. And then we have uh, the optic lobe, which has decreased in comparison to the trout brain, um, as you can see in blue. Moving on, we have um, kind of this weird looking brain, um, which is our alligator brain. When we look at this, we see that the cerebrum in yellow is relatively large in comparison to other areas, and then the cerebellum in red is relatively small. Um, from this, we can kind of consider that movement and coordination is not of the greatest importance to this animal. However, maybe this animal uh, may have increased sensation and reasoning as compared to our previous species. And then moving on to this brain, we have our pigeon brain. The cerebrum has increased dramatically compared to our alligator. So um, they are potentially making more complex decisions and may have increased senses. Another key aspect is that the cerebellum has increased folding and therefore a larger surface area, potentially dealing with more complex movements and just more increased movement in general. And lastly, there is a relatively large um, optic lobe as pigeons are a prey species and they potentially have to use their vision for observing any potential threats. And then lastly, we have um, the dog brain, and this is kind of our representative of a mammalian brain. This brain has folds in both the cerebrum and the cerebellum, um, and mammals are constantly moving and making much more complex decisions than potentially any of the previous species, um, and so that's why uh, we get all, the, all of these different folds and a greater surface area on the brain.